You're listening to the PGM India Insights podcast series by PGM India Asset Management. Hello and welcome everyone to the second episode of the PGM India Insights podcast series by PGM India Asset Management. In this series, investment experts share their perspectives on the most pressing issues impacting global and domestic markets and how you can prepare your portfolio to benefit from opportunities. across markets today we have with us ankit jain from pgm india asset management in conversation with surjit singh arora portfolio manager and principal officer pgm india portfolio management services over to you ankit thanks alia uh, happy to be back and record on one more podcast uh, i would like to start today's discussion by a famous investment quote it is impossible to produce superior performance unless you do something different from the majority and with this quote in the background i would like to ask surjit what is the secret recipe of your success uh thank you ankit if you look at the secret recipe there are two parts to it one is the investment process and other is the philosophy so let me take you through the investment process we follow at pigeon pms if you look at our portfolios majority of our investment companies are either debt free or have very low net debt to equity we invest in structurally strong companies that are termed as good quality companies a good quality company is a company that has reached a minimum scale in terms of revenue has gone through at least one down cycle and emerged as a stronger company has consistency in terms of cash flows and higher return on capital employed over the last 10 years so sujit so, what would be that minimum uh, you know uh, scale in terms of revenue a uh, good question so if you look at the minimum in terms of scale of revenue we normally look at 400 crores as the bare minimum when we look to identify stocks for the portfolio sure okay so ankit if you look at the philosophy which we follow here is the philosophy of growth at reasonable price which is a simple yet effective principle of investing that has been time tested for many years you know while investing in equities is for growth equally important is the price one pays for growth hence gar which is growth at reasonable price as a philosophy balances the two tenets of investing that is value and growth now you have seen our portfolios right you can vouch for the same that i am a firm believer in conviction calls getting reflected in my portfolio so if you look at the weightages assigned to the stocks in the portfolio we are very happy to have a concentrated portfolio of 20 to 22 stocks where our top 10 holdings account for 55% of our portfolio approximately sure i think uh, all re- renowned investment guru have created a wealth in uh, having a concentrated portfolio so uh, which will help our listeners resonate very well of your philosophy sujit you are also known for margin of safety calls in your portfolio how do you come to that decision while creating a portfolio that's a great question i mean if i go back to history and if i look at last 18 months uh market has gone through a very tough time right as you rightly pointed out the margin of safety has to have some process some philosophy behind it so just to take your question forward uh we always look at price to earning divided by earnings growth which is nothing but a pg ratio when i talk about earnings growth we normally talk about a 3 year compounded growth in terms of earnings let me give you an example let's say a company is trading at 40 times one year forward pe and the expected earnings over the next 3 years is 25% so the simple math is 40 which is your multiple divided by the earnings growth which is 25 so 40 divided by 25 is around 1.6 times so we are very much comfortable with a ratio of peg pg ratio anywhere between 1 to 1.5 times when we start building the portfolio and anything in excess of 3 times we would look at selling so as a okay. process uh, no single stock should be more than 10% of our portfolio and no single sector should be more than 25% of our portfolio okay so you know for our listeners to explain margin of safety in uh, you know one line it would be to buy good quality companies at reasonable valuation and then stay invested you know for its structural growth story so uh, surjit uh, as you rightly said you know uh, last 18 months have been very, very challenging in the markets uh, but uh, you know there are some sectors uh, which you would be playing in your portfolio so which are those sectors you are bullish on yeah okay so if you look at there are four sectors where we have been quite positive on and that is also reflecting in the way we have performed over the last 18 months so if you look at the sectors which we have been quite positive on these are industrials autos real estate and building material so let me take you through the first sector which is industrials and our thought process behind the same a major theme that could play out over a longer term 
is the production linked incentive scheme which is also known as the PLI scheme currently more than 32 billion dollars have been allocated to various sectors under this PLI scheme just for the benefit of your understanding a PLI scheme is a scheme which incentivizes the companies which manufacture in India and have their manufacturing plant in India itself it is aimed at boosting the manufacturing sector and to reduce the import content. Let me give you some examples. Whether it is a defense company, a bearings company, or a capital goods company, the companies are focusing on import substitution and make in India thought process. So, uh, Sujit, uh, you know, if you want to ask you, you know, when you are interacting with these companies, what is their take on these, uh, you know, PLI schemes, which government is, you know, launching for various sectors? Yeah. So if you look at in our recent interaction with manufacturing companies, Many of the companies have reduced their import component by increasing the localization of the components. Uh, bearing companies have not only increased their local content by substituting their import, but also started exporting to their parent companies in a bigger way. So if you look at a lot of uh, uh, you know bearing companies in India, their export revenues over the last few years have been in inching upwards. Okay. Now, now taking your uh, earlier question forward, apart from industrials, we are also looking at autos as a sector. Now, just to throw some uh, data points, on a five-year basis, Nifty Auto delivered a return of 6.25% on a compounding basis versus Nifty 50 returns of 13.3%. Surely, in last five years, from a time frame perspective, auto has one, been one of the underperforming sectors. However, if you look at on a last one-year basis, the tides have turned. Nifty Auto has delivered a return of 28.5%, vis-a-vis 14.3% for Nifty. Now, if you look what had you know impacted the auto sector over the last uh, five years there were broadly three headwinds first and foremost the cost went up by 15 to 20 percent of a vehicle due to the transition from bs4 to bs6 bs4 is basically the emission norms which had come into play around three to four years back and recently we have seen v transforming to bs6 as the emission norms for the aut automobile industry that itself has entailed a cost increase of over 15 percent for the companies second as we all are aware covid led to a break in terms of consumption on automobiles add to that the raw material inflation which went through the roof also impacted the profitability margins of these companies let me come to the tailwinds now what happened in last one year and why the sector is now in limelight the first is premiumization trend across the sector leading to better mix just to give you an example if you remember five to ten years back right uh, yeah. we used to have a small car in our uh, houses from a small car we went to a sedan and today i'm sure when uh, you uh, ask your friends relatives everyone is gung-ho about the suv segment which is a sports utility vehicle segment right yeah so that is what is leading to a better mix for these companies the second thing is after COVID, each and every household wants their personal mobility, a personal vehicle for their mobility. And that trend also is leading to a better sales for automobile companies. Lastly, if you look at the raw material, the basket of raw material from the peak, which we saw in the month of April, May last year, it has corrected by 30 to 40 percent. Given that the demand continues to be relatively resilient, auto companies uh, don't take price cuts. Hence, from their margin visibility or the improvement in margins, they are in a very sweet spot. You would be comfortable holding a, a two-wheeler company or a four-wheeler, you know, in your portfolio? That's a tricky one. But let me uh, try to answer that. So, if you look at four-wheelers, within four-wheelers, we prefer passenger vehicles as a segment. As I told you earlier, the premiumization trend which is happening when people are shifting from a small car to a sedan to SUV is quite evident in the four-wheeler companies. Whereas within two-wheelers, we are more inclined towards premium segment. Yeah, I think uh, we all have been uh, reading in papers that, you know, more Mercedes are being sold than, uh, you know, a two-wheeler. So uh, I think our listeners can resonate very well with what you are, you know, saying. So continue, Surjit, uh, if you can spend some time on real estate as you've been talking about sectors. Yeah. Yes. So as you rightly mentioned, a third sector where we are quite uh, positive on is the real estate sector. Now, just to give you a background of this sector, this sector accounts for 6 to 7 percent of India's GDP and is the second largest employment generator. If you look at the drivers for this sector, there are basically three drivers which are leading to this sector doing very well. The first is increased urbanization, people moving from, you know, 
small towns to bigger cities second is the aspirational value uh, with real estate and the third is nuclear families these drivers are significant in terms of india's growth story in terms of real estate now if you study the period of 2015 to 2020 commercial real estate did very well however after covid if you look at the residential side of the real estate it has started to doing quite well in terms of the sales in terms of the collections which these real estate companies are garnering again if you look at the consolidation which has happened in the industry just to give you a data point the great a developers today the top 10 developers in india their share in the overall market has gone up to 27% which was less than 20% in cy15 again if you look at the consolidation which has been happening there has been the decline in terms of number of developers so many micro markets have seen 40 to 70% reduction in terms of the number of real estate players in that particular market also if you look at the inventory levels the average inventory in terms of number of months has reduced from a peak of 40 months to around 26 to 27 months yeah i think uh, suji we all see people around us uh, only uh, you know upgrading uh, their uh, houses from 1 bhk to 2 and then so and so forth so uh you know within a uh, real estate sector what would be your preference so if you look at this sector it encompasses three sub sectors residential commercial and retail within that we believe residential and retail should do well okay so i think that's a good update on uh, sectors you are bullish on sujit we have two strategies uh, core and phoenix Uh, what is the current construct of these uh, strategies one is the core equity portfolio which is a multi cap equity investment approach in this portfolio we look at 15 years of listed history apart from the return on capital employed and the consistency in cash flows which i alluded to earlier now if you look at the construct of this portfolio as we speak today large cap accounts for 37% of the portfolio mid cap around 41% and small cap 16% here the top 10 holdings account for 55% of the portfolio thereby reflecting our conviction calls in the portfolio the other strategy which we have is the phoenix portfolio it mainly invest in structural and cyclical companies and it's predominantly a small and mid cap approach so if you look at the construct of the portfolio currently small caps account for 50% of the portfolio and mid cap account for almost 40% of the portfolio hence here the risk profile is different given the make of the portfolio the phoenix portfolio which has a tilt towards a small cap oriented approach it should be given to a client who is okay in investing in high risk strategy because as you know a small and mid cap oriented strategy on a relative basis will have a high risk associated with it just to give you a number the average market cap of a phoenix portfolio stands at around 18000 crores sure thanks uh, so i think that's a good update on uh, you know both the strategies uh, now you know for our listeners who uh, want to know where they should put their money whether it is mutual fund or pms uh, i think um, uh, both mutual funds and pms are actually complementary to each other uh mutual funds are generally open for everybody whereas uh, pms is uh, you know for a niche set of investors uh in our view uh, you know clients uh, should have both mutual funds and pms uh, the only uh, differentiation would be pms uh, you can only start with a minimum ticket size of 50 lakhs uh whereas in mutual fund you can start with as low as uh, you know 500 rupees and uh, depending on your risk profile and uh, you know your risk appetite you should uh, choose uh, what uh, suits you best so to summarize for our listeners uh, in pms we follow growth at reasonable price philosophy which is carp uh, we build portfolio which is of 20 to 22 stocks uh, across both uh, you know phoenix and uh, core uh, strategy core is more of a multi cap strategy where you will find uh, a large cap little on the higher allocation along with mid and small cap whereas uh, phoenix is a small and mid cap strategy where you will find small and mid cap more than large cap in sectors uh, we like industrials autos uh, real estate and building material i think uh, uh, that's about it so uh, sujit i hope uh, i've covered and summarized it uh, uh, you know pretty well for our listeners absolutely and thanks ankit it was good chatting with you thanks sujit thanks so much You are listening to the Pejam India Insights podcast series by Pejam India Asset Management. Stay tuned to get more such insights. Remember, investments in products are subject to market risks. There is no assurance or guarantee or warranty that the objectives of any of the products will be achieved. 
The client can avail the portfolio management services directly from the portfolio manager without any recourse to distributors. We'll be back with another episode very soon. But in the meantime, enjoy this one. You're listening to the PGM India Insights podcast series by PGM India Asset Management.